This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. How much of the issues with Asa Elrup and the Suffolk County Police Department are a reflection of James Burke? Obviously, he's gone now. He is in jail, but uh, he was the head. And I'm just, you know, he, he was tainting this department for so long with what he was doing. It, it's just because he's gone doesn't mean all of the bad behavior is out. How long does something like that take? to really fully flush out and get a refreshed group of people there, whether they were there when he was there or not, and just changing attitudes and changing methods and behaviors of handling cases like this. It can take a very long time, and here's why. When you have an organization where the leader at the top is corrupt like he was, and I say corrupt, it's not necessarily we're looking at criminal activities, although he did do criminal activities. It's corrupt in a sense of there's always this, difference between just because it's unethical doesn't mean it's illegal. Mm -hmm. And if you have someone at the top that's doing unethical things and and they're going to surround themselves by people that are like thinkers, you know, we all, you know, Robert Greene's book, Laws of Human Behavior, we've talked about it here before. And yeah. that is we seek people out that validate our own self-opinion of ourselves and the world around us. And if you're the type of individual like the former chief was, that is all about secrecy, shaming, and hiding these massive character flaws in his life, he's going to surround himself with people that make him feel safe in those behaviors. And people that make you feel safe in those behaviors most likely have the same behaviors. And they have practiced years of overcoming what it looks like to the outside world. I mean, we I've seen this in executives and organizations for a long time, especially if it's a nonprofit organization. In other words, government organizations, as institute, mm -hmm. you get a bad seat at the top and a corrupt leader, an unethical leader, or even a, someone conducting a legal activity, that they form a circle around them. And that circle just filters down those same behaviors. And until all those people are flushed out, it's going to continue because it does those behaviors and mindsets start from the top and they keep filtering on down. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like what we look like at sometimes in in corrupt regimes and such, where you you get rid of the and I'm talking like foreign countries and things of that nature. You get rid of the one leader, but it just the next one pops into the spot. That and I'm not saying who's there now is corrupt by any means, but oh, absolutely. Uh, but what I'm saying is they're still there. They linger, and trying to get them out is not the easiest thing. Here's a great analogy I love to use. Let's just talk politics for a second yeah. without being partisan in any way. Sure. So when a president's elected, the president then appoints the leader of every single organization in government, whether Department of Justice, Secretary of the Navy, Secretary of Defense, IRS, Secret Service, CIA. All these organizations then are headed up by someone appointed by the president and their politics. And so that then gets filtered down through those organizations. And so if someone as the chief is going to appoint the people that he or she likes at those positions, and then that kind of philosophy is going to filter down. And a lot of those people, when a new administration comes on board or a new chief comes on board, well, if they're showing good numbers, they're showing good stats, why would we get rid of them? Even though you might not know what's going on behind the scenes. And so that's why it can be very difficult to get rid of people over a period of time like that. Sure. Is it too far of a stretch to ask the question of did Rex Hierman have any sort of interaction or relationship with James Burke, considering they both seem to be, as it's been described, cruising for sex in the same areas around the same time? It's not like there's always a, you know, a big old club of these you know, Johns out there that are trading secrets or anything. But at the same point, they ran in very much the same circles. And there would be a reason for James to protect Rex at the same time he's protecting himself uh, from what's going on out there. And there's also, if you want to go super far into the, this could be a lifetime miniseries is, you know, if if Rex didn't want to be caught or to be associated or known with some of these people, and they were to go disappear and James were to just look the other way, that could also be advantageous for both of them if they're both using these same people. You know, it's an interesting theory. I think it <laughs> it's fraught with risk on both sides. Totally. It's, you know, <laughs> just because they're both unknowingly of each other, putting a lot of trust in each other to keep each other alive yep. and safe. But I say this, 
you fo- you go where the evidence leads you. Yeah. And in this case, you know, it's a theory. And what a good investigators do is they investigate every theory out there, you know, to kind of see if it has any legs or not, because you never know. As I've seen even doing my own, as you know, as a <laughs> ascertaining information about all these different cases, you know, I get asked my thoughts and theories a lot of times and 90% of the time I'm completely wrong because I didn't consider X, Y, and Z or something in left court that we never saw. Because a lot of times what happens in these things is we see such a very small part of these people's lives and people that have lifetime of reps of having secret place really well hidden you have no idea about things that are going on behind the scenes. And I generally hit these things extremely open-minded with possibilities. So that's why when you mention that, it's a possibility. I don't think it's probable just because of the level of risk that they both have to take and rely. See, those two individuals, when you're doing something that is so abhorrent against society where everyone around you is going to judge you and you could literally ruin your life and everyone's lives around you, the likelihood of you sharing that with anyone is slim to none just because they got to keep it so secret to keep alive and keep safe. So it would be good for the lifetime movie version of this. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, I mean how would eyes any of this? It would be interesting. <laughs> well, it's an, it is an interesting yeah. angle because you're right now. On the flip side of that, do I think there's sex workers in that area that interacted with both of them? Most likely, yeah. because you're right. It is. A, I think it's a small circle. And now we talk about building relationships again for getting more viable and good information to prosecute cases like this. Mm-hmm. Not just someone that has a good relationship with the family to have leads that can be generated from that, but also I've seen this. You know, a lot of mismanagement of this, and that is. You know, we've talked about this before, too. You know, so many of these sex workers are not there by choice. Yep. They've been tra- they were trafficked as children and they grew up through this system and they're entrapped and they literally can't get out of this. And a lot of times law enforcement, like society does, looks down upon these people as if they're making a, an abhorrent choice against society to do that kind of work. More <laughs> most of the time and large majority of the time, it is not a choice. And so the greatest law enforcement organizations across the country that I've seen are the ones that actually have a relationship with these girls and women and others also, because it's not just it's men as well, to help them extricate themselves from these situations without judging them. So in other words, having someone that actually has a relationship with that part of their community there could lead to a lot of more information. So I'm hoping that someone inside the law enforcement organizations there is doing that as well. There's connections to, at least seemingly connections to Rex in several other states, Las Vegas, South Carolina being a very interesting one, all the way to the point that one of the family members of Julianne Bean, who was murdered, the daughter of Julia, says that she immediately recognized Hewerman when she saw a photo of the suspected killer. She said, I have chills. I've seen him. This was the last time. It was the last man that she says she saw her mother with personally the investigation is ongoing a lot of people are a lot of officials are saying yeah there seems to be a connection but there's also some that are coming back and saying no there we would love it but maybe there's really not is there a confirmation bias going on here or is the evidence pretty solid looking at the south carolina connection patterns of human behavior we all have a lot of confirmation bias she you said (laughs) she's she immediately recognized, yeah. I would throw the word in, she immediately wanted to recognize. Okay. And then we go where the evidence leads us. So again, like we were just talking about these other instances, a good lead to start following up. I thought the sheriff down there, if it's a sheriff or chief, I'm not sure which, you know, did a really good interview where he said, hey, as of right now, there is no concrete leads or evidence suggesting it, but... It's something to follow up. And so it's not being dismissed. It's just saying, hey, let's make sure we're going to do some due diligence, not jump to conclusions, not jump to hearsay. There's a possibility here. So let's start exploring the possibility and do our due diligence to do that. Because, yes, we want to we want resolution, yeah. you know, in our lives. And so this would give them resolution if indeed there is a connection there. I'm hoping it is a connection, you know, so they can have some closure in their lives. Is it? We'll see. Yeah. 
You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.